Hello and welcome everyone to this podcast, A Bone to Pick with Waddy or Michael Waddell, whichever one you want to call me. This podcast is brought to you by Bushnell, the official optics of Realtree. You know, it's hard to believe Bushnell is celebrating 25 years since the innovation of the hunting laser rangefinder. A Bone to Pick podcast is also brought to you by the fine people at Chevrolet, the Chevy Silverado Realtree edition featuring authentic Realtree camo pattern accents and graphics. Chevy Silverado is the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. This podcast is also brought to you by the best camo patterns in the industry, Realtree. You know, I got my start with Realtree and Realtree continues to keep me hidden. Also, this podcast of On The Pick is brought to you by BoneCollector.com, where you can get all your Bone Collector swag. All right, enough of who brought you this and that. It's time to get out this big old chunk of meat and get it off the bone. That's why we call it a Bone To Pick. Well, here we are. Thank you for being on the podcast, and thank you for uh, just having a great week together. Here we are coming off an unbelievable hunt with our buddy Blake Shelton. Actually, still on his plane right here, but... Yes, sir. What a time we've had. It's It's been unbelievable. We've had a good time, and uh, obviously, if you're tuning in, here it is, our... A legendary figure, one of my favorite all-time country singers, John uh, Anderson. And, John, thank you, buddy. And, man, I just want to catch up and chat with you. Man, talk about life and hunting and everything. Just have a good time. Well, thank you, Michael. First off, I want to say, boy, I've really enjoyed your show. And uh, y'all do some wonderful shows and uh, uh, do great things for the great sport of hunting. And uh, I want to thank you for that, uh, first off. And I want to say what a real pleasure it was spending time with you and uh, actually getting to go into Turkey Woods with you and, and hearing a real champ call, wow. <laughs> man. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a great experience. Sure was. Well, when, when Blake had texted me and said, hey, I'm, we're putting together a turkey hunt, and I said, man, I'm in. And he said, I think you're going to be excited, but I got my buddy John Anderson. And, man, I'm like, you got to be kidding me because uh, I'd met you a couple times, you know, at, at little functions and different things at the at National Wild Turkey Federation Convention one year and a couple places yes, and shows. And I'd always wanted to turkey hunt with you because I knew that you were a diehard turkey hunter. And one of our mutual friends, Harold Knight yes, sir. and David Hale, I knew y'all spent a lot of time hunting together. Uh, I actually pretty much got started. Uh, David and Harold were kind enough to come down and, Show me some yeah. turkey hunting lessons, and uh, I remember Harold taking pretty great pains trying to teach me how to call, but I, I don't believe I ever got his lick ever. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, those were two great guys who also did a, an awful lot for the sport of hunting. And uh, and like you say, just uh, getting to meet you uh, at several of these functions, and I know we'd mentioned before, hope we get to go hunting together sometime. Well, it finally came true, and... Uh, well, what a what a wonderful time it was! It sure is, was. and we, you know, we we got on a few turkeys right off the bat, and them son of a guns. But then after that, man, they got kind of tough, and John ended up having a chance to whack a big old turkey. Me and him, it was taking all of our turkey prowess and all, and and just like you, Harold and David taught me a lot about turkey hunting. And we got on a big old field turkey, and you don't get to see this much, but John and I, man, this turkey come out there, and we felt like we had a chance, but he was hinned up, and and uh. John had brought his old decoy called Tommy, and we was out there, and and we look up, and big old Longbeard's kind of coming, ain't paying us more attention. He's in love, and all of a sudden, here comes another Longbeard, and they fought and beat the tar out of each oh, other. Oh, I thought they was going to fight until they just finally got tired and go <laughs> off too. somewhere else. Yeah, but yeah, you, you kind of pulled a trick on them when you crawled out in that field and started crawling on that decoy like i told you i'm glad it was you i don't think i'll ever try that again crawling. but now i used to crawl that's right but, I, uh, i'm about out of shape to do uh, that anymore but uh but to, to to experience that and hear you calling and and see you working that decoy and then seeing them two big old both of them stop their fighting and looked over there and next thing you know they were running so about 300 yards they ran full speed so that's right we had a heck of a deal mr mr john put one of them on the road to glory and i tell you we got to looking <laughs> we first walked it we tell he had a long beard but he had some hooks on him oh, and me yeah. and john had talked that morning said, man be nice get us a big old limb hanger and yes sir and we got our picture now yes he's we up did. there hanging on a limb he brother. is he is yeah real well, proud of that hunt sure was well it's funny i know how proud you are of just being in a camp like this but one thing that I found absolutely just 
and even more honored to be around you. You know, Blake, I remember, you know, this past year, of course, mm-hmm. COVID's been crazy, but y'all oh, it has. went on tour together. And when I saw that you were on the ticket, I was blown away. And I had a chance to catch that last show in, show in Wichita that y'all mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. And, uh, and, and to see Blake have you in camp, and I know you could feel that. How good does that feel to see where you have been and you've been around all the greats? And to see that respect, that's got to feel special, John. Oh, I was very, I'm always very flattered and honored around Blake. And first off, uh, let me just say this. He, he's done so much for me just by putting me on that great tour. Uh, we had some of the grandest shows I believe I've ever uh, been a part of. Some, yes. of the, some of the very best. And uh, like I say, and, and I've been a fan of Blake since he started. He knows that. Actually, uh, uh, he called George Jones and myself in to sing. I believe it was like on his second album. So uh, we go back a long ways, and, and I've been loving old Blake's music for a long time. Yes. But to see how he's handled his career and himself, uh, I, I've never been prouder of anybody as far as, uh, uh, and I'll tell you what, the folks that see him on, on The View, and because and yep. I've heard all around the country say, boy, he seems like a good old yes. boy. Well, I want them people to know he's better than just a good old boy. He's, he's really great. He, I, and I he's agree. a good heart. And his. as we know, uh, he showed us he, sh- he showed us one of the greatest times I've ever had. And uh, same here. I'll always uh, I'll take this memory with me just as long as I can. That's exactly right. And in, in one, I mean, you can just see it. I mean, here we are sitting on essentially Blake's really oh. nice taxi cab, a big old jet. <laughs> and and you know, I was real hesitant to even be able to sit here and talk to you in this jet. But you know, I think one thing that's important for people to see is one thing I always had in common and always felt like I heard it in your music. We grew up country, redneck, blue collar, whatever people want to label somebody like myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, I've been called just a little bit of everything. Yes, so sir. It don't hurt him, man. And I know, I know Blake has too. And, uh, and right now, to me, it's, uh, it's American dream. Th- this is the picture of American dream. And so in reality, even though it could come across as like, yeah, it must be nice riding around on jets and stuff. I never thought I'd be on a plane like this, and I know you didn't either. Oh, and I can no. promise you, I know that Blake never even thought that he would ever have something he could fly his friends around and have a ranch we could hunt. So it just proves that Blake didn't get there, nor did you, by doing nothing but taking a good Lord's uh, talent that they gave you and hard work and discipline. And There, there was American a lot dream. of hard work. There was a lot of hard work along the way, and, and I know Blake had his share of hard work. We all have as far as uh, the ones of us that really want to work that hard. But, uh, yeah, the American dream is still alive. Yes, sir. And uh, it's still possible to achieve it. And uh, thank God we live in the greatest country in the world. Amen to that. I mean, here it is. uh an old turkey caller won a few contests, and here I am having a chance to I sit. believe you've won more than a few. <laughs> I, 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 I sure ain't going to enter no contest with you, I'll well, tell you that. Well, I can promise you I won't be in no karaoke <laughs> contest against you or Blake either. And uh, it, it was just gave me cold chills, man. You got to busting out wild and blue, and John brought that six string out and, and sang some of his new songs. And I can't even begin to tell you how special it was, not only to hear the music, but to to get to know each other, you know, we had Clint Boyer in camp, who's retired now. Oh, Clint's, uh, I've known him for several years now, and yes, he's sir. one of the finest people. Great. And there guy. again, that's another profession. Buddy, uh, as you saw, you know, old Clint jumped on Blake's motorcycle and just <laughs> tore out across there and started to Riding look, like, look like evil Knievel. He did. You know, and, uh, you know, just to see, you know, and trust me, I, that's, that's not hardly what, what I can do, you know, I'm afraid I'd kill myself. But uh, old Clint and those guys, the, the NASCAR drivers and such, uh, it's always been uh, really uh, special for me to see those guys do what they do because I, I, that's something I guess I could have never done. Oh, I, I know it. I can't go that fast. And then we had Jimmy John, you know, Jimmy John oh, sandwiches. He's in yes. camp. Yep. I we t- ate I some great food. Yes, we did. Jimmy sure brought did. one of them big couple. Well, not one. I think one would have fed us all the big <laughs> tomahawk steaks, and I think that's what was kind of the the feeling. I was just blown away 
at the diversity, but yet the common thread of just having a good time, everybody's so secure, laughing, cutting up, we're chasing turkeys. Uh, Jimmy, John, as well as Clint had never done a lot of turkey hunting. Of course, me and you were kind of the, we had done a lot. And so we were kind of ones trying to make sure everybody got one. And, and at the end of it, I was just blown away, you know, thinking about, you and Blake with your six string, you know, Clint who grew up on a dirt bike, racing dirt bikes, and then that led to go karts to, you know, racing NASCAR. and yes, winning sir. and having a very illustrious yeah, and winning. That's the other side of it. Yes, racing and winning. Racing and winning, <laughs> uh, exactly. And then you got Jimmy John who's there, mm-hmm. who uh, basically made a there, restaurant you know, making sandwiches. Example of the great American dream come true. Exactly. You know. You know uh, and, and I never went to college. I mean, did you ever go to any college? No, I never made it. <laughs> Me neither. I made it to a few parties. <laughs> and you probably played a few parties. I played it at several colleges. Yes, sir. Sure have. Well, speaking of, of, of playing in music, obviously, immediately, I, I told you the story the first time I ever heard your voice. My dad was a contractor, and uh, he would be building houses. And I was literally, I was 10, 11 years old. And you've been doing this a long time. And. I remember swinging coming on the radio. Of course, uh, around the same time, you know, some of these other great songs that are classics now came out. And I remember my dad immediately, not only did he like the song, but he was like, I like this dude right here. He had seen you on an interview, and he said, that's my man. He had never met you, never knew you from anybody other than he'd heard your voice. And immediately I like, man, John Anderson was in my house every day. We listened to it. My mom uh, well, we would crank it up, and, and, and I just wanted you to kind of give people a little background that might not know the road that, that you was on. And I know you have played and sang and hung with people like the greats Merle Haggard, George Jones. You know, we talked about Earl Thomas. We talked about uh, um, old Melvin, old Mel Tillis, Mel and all Tillis, those guys. All those guys were wonderful friends of mine. I was very fortunate to uh, actually go and hunting trips with johnny cash oh my and, goodness uh, oh yeah oh yeah and have done i probably worked th- 300 250 or 300 shows with george jones wow. so he and i became really close friends uh we had some wonderful times together also and and i'm hoping we put on some pretty great shows back in those days i know his part of it was great anyway, i know yours was too but uh you know, just being able to uh, look back through the years. Uh, I'm one of the guys, I, st- I got there early enough in Nashville. I moved there in 1972, which was uh, still what we call kind of the old school country music. Yes, Like I say, uh, Johnny Cash and Eddie Arnold and, uh, you know, Merle Haggard, of course, coming on up, George Jones, Waylon Jennings. Uh, yes, sir. All these guys were ended up being friends of mine. Wow. And it was something to, uh, you know, actually get to meet someone that pretty much had been an idol and an inspiration to you and then get to meet them and end up laughing and talking and having fun just like we've had all week. It really special. I have some very special memories with uh, all those guys, but especially John Cash and Merle Haggard and George. We've spent a lot of time together. Sure did. Was those guys at the end of it, they were, everything I've always heard, kind, nice, and humble. The best. Even though they the were on top best. of the game, we all, the including myself and everybody listened to we looked up at them. But I would imagine they would just jump right in the trenches with anybody and sit down and have a cold beer or a glass of iced tea with just about anybody. And they seemed to be. A couple of them might have a cold beer, you yeah. know, and a couple of them would just drink iced tea. That's you know, right. But uh, nevertheless, uh they there was they were great talents and uh legends pretty much all the guys we just mentioned they're yes they're legend status and then to get to see guys like blake uh you know coming up through the right actually you know be, becoming one of the biggest stars in the world yeah and uh like I say having known him since he started that's a whole not you know that's that's kind of seeing from the old school torch being passed on right yes, on sir. to the, to what's happening now, which is uh, the music's changed right. and uh, things are different. But uh, the young folks that are doing and writing the songs and singing them, there's, 
they're still having to work just as hard as uh, as we ever did. I mean, it, it's never been an easy business, but uh, for the most part, uh, I've always said any anybody that can get in the music business and uh, become professional and start, uh, you know, getting things out of it, then uh, more power to them as far as that. Right. Sure, it's because uh, it's not an easy business. No, sir, I, I can imagine. And I've never, you know, it seems, uh, you know, I, I've been around because I've always been such a fan of music, and I've been around it, and you can tell it's a, it's a tough one to break into. It does appear to me when you look back, even when you got into it in the 70s, and you look at the Merle Haggers and, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time talking about old Bo Cephas and all these stories. And oh, yeah, Hank's is a good the past, one, too. Yes, has the, is, is, is the path to get there, you think, different now than it was back Oh, yeah, the time? path has changed uh, immensely, you know. Uh, for instance, yeah, when I, when I moved to Nashville back in 1972, it was still a time when, when you could carry your guitar up and down Music Row and knock on the go in the little offices and uh, kind of audition for whoever was in charge there. Wow. Not that it'd do you a lot of good a lot of times because they'd always say, well, son, we're pretty, we've, we've got all the artists we need, but uh, if we have an opening, we might call you sometime. Feel like a little lip service, right? <laughs> it, it was. It was. Because, <laughs> yeah, the ones that really liked you, they'd say, uh, are you signed with anybody? No, sir. We want to sign you. So, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, but still, uh, it has changed. Now, uh, managers and, and agents and publicity people kind of spread the word about new artists before the new artists can ever be heard. So, so they so kind of got this. Changed. Well, you got to have, I guess, well, the right people working with you to, uh, to stand much of a chance. So days. it's possible now for a certain agency that could get behind you to kind of start bush hogging you a path versus – Oh, they do it the all the time. Sixties and seventies, you, you had you had to had have to, your own slang blade. You about had to bush hog your own trail back then, and pray but, somebody saw your work ethic, said, or, or your talent, and say, "Wow, this guy is different." Then that's when the manager could grab you. That's when things started looking up. Then, yeah. But like I say, these days things just seem to be much different. Uh, they they get new artists these days, and uh, you know, kind of set out promotion plans and things for them, and. Uh, you know, they, they either work or they don't, and the ones that they work on are the ones you hear about. Yes, sir. Well, it's it's amazing, too, because I'm a big fan of music, and I like a lot of the new country, and I still, though, boy, I like that, that, that classic. And, I you know, when you when you look back and you hear, I, I use a song like Wild and Blue. It's got that sentiment of bluegrass. It's got that old kind of mm -hmm. yearning gospel song in it, and, and, and you still hear a little bit of that, but then, but then the music changes. Do you think that it seems to cycle back around? Do you ever you see a resurgence in certain classic country at certain times, or you think we'll ever see anything like that again? It's it's hard for me to say. You know, right. Uh, I think a good song will always be a uh, a great song will always be a great song. You know. Yes. Sir. Uh, sometimes getting them played or getting the general public to hear them can be a, a real chore, but. Uh, for the most part, uh, and I don't know if I see old the old classic country like you're talking about coming back as far as, you know, I mean, I don't think it'll ever just die out. But uh, it's, on the other been. hand, it's not mainstream anymore. Right. I, I mean, that's for sure. It's almost something you go back and you can grab that. Yeah. This is here, but you can always grab that. And there's still being records oh, made, yeah. but it doesn't mean They're, like how, how, how tough is that? Like we were talking in, in a lot of the songs you wrote, like "Wish I Wish I Could Have Been There." That's one of my mm -hmm. favorite, and you oh, said it was you. one of your your favorite songs you've written because it has a lot of meaning yeah, it to comes me. From the heart, it's from the heart. I spent a lot of time on the road, and I, and be honest with you, first first time I heard it, I was really just getting started in my career, and I had a young family, I had a a young son, and I was missing missing baseball games, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, little little Bobby hit his first home oh, wrong. He was a hero of the hometown crowd. You know, two to one is a winning run. And dude, I ain't gonna lie, my old tear come to my eye because I was living this life that was unbelievable. I was hunting with people uh, that that I couldn't believe I was hunting with. I was hunting areas 
but they was this simple side of me I could not believe I was away from my family and I wanted to be at the Sunday dinner. I wanted to be at the Sunday service and it was going to be fried chicken, you know, sure. covered dish yeah. Sunday at the church down there. My young and I was going over my dad's <laughs> and there was this weird place within me. And when I heard that song, it hit, it hit me hard. It well, did. Like I said, it came from the heart and, it, and pretty much personal experience of me being gone so many times for those important right. things. But, uh, there again, that's what a good country song used to stand for, is something that touched okay. people and uh, in a way that, yeah, that it, uh, it wasn't just a, a little thing. They, they could latch on, you know, yes, sir. to certain songs. And they're still latching on to songs. I mean, right. everybody's got their favorite songs, and that's kind of what music's about, just people enjoying it. And, uh, but now when you're, when you're on my side of the deal, yeah, it seems to be a constant job, wanting to write. St still, I can't ever see myself stopping writing or stopping performing as long as there's a, a place to perform and, and people that want to hear me. So, uh, yes, I get you know, I don't think I've ever said the word retire. For That's me, right. For me, you know. In fact, my old buddy Johnny Cash, I heard a woman ask him, John, when are you going to retire? And he said, he looked down at me and he said, how do you retire from being Johnny Cash? I said, well, there's only one way and you don't want it. That's right. So I, I'm not into retiring. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I hear that. Let me tell you, the world does not want John Anderson retiring. Obviously, oh, we, don't, we, we, we miss Johnny Cash. But I tell, uh, it, it's how, how does when you write down these songs, and I, and I was using, you know, wish I could have been there as an example, and then all of a sudden maybe – the radio or the record executives say, no, nah, we're not going to, not so much that one, where you know, you know that it's a hit. You know that it's going to well, touch people. Is that hard? Is you that would hard? know it's a good song, and you would know that people would probably want to hear it. But in my case, that happened enough times where uh, I got tired of arguing with them about it. So you get callous to a degree. You do. And and then you just save those songs for the yeah, campfire. Yeah, I just do my songs. Well, these days I just pretty much do. You know, I I'm not on a record label per se, right? So, so I about do what I want. Well, speaking of a, of a record, let the listeners know here because obviously there's a lot of hunting fans. There's people all over. You know, listen to this. And John just put together, in my opinion, could be some of your best work that you put together and some unbelievable songs on there. And I do believe that the COVID stuff, you know, we, we miss having a chance to hear those songs when you was on tour this past year and some mm -hmm. of the stuff. And it seemed like everything just died down. People trying to figure out how to get a piece of chicken and toilet paper. <laughs> and, and so uh, definitely let people know about this new album that I absolutely love the songs. You actually got one with Blake on there as well. Oh, we, yeah. He, he was nice enough to come and join us on this particular record to, the album's name is called Years, uh, after a song, the title song. And, yeah, it, uh, I worked on it with my buddies Dan Auerbach and David Ferguson. We had great time in the studio. We were able to write some good songs. But there again, you know, I've done this long enough. Let me say this. as Just like turkey hunting in the music business, yes, timing's everything. Yes, sir. So, you know, when... If you put out a new record and COVID all of a sudden hits, then I guess that's just another pill to swallow. But but it's still all just fine. The the people that did, I had a lot of dear fans that uh, enjoyed the record, and I guess they're still enjoying it. You know, I, I wished a few more of them might have got to hear it, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we got a lot of fans that uh, gave us a lot of support, and uh, we got a lot of great. Uh, critical reviews or a lot of great reviews from from the critics right and uh it was good you know i enjoyed doing it and yeah i'll get enough nerve up again i hope someday to soon to do another one well i can promise you we won't have keep to write some more new songs i guess well there's nothing like hearing your voice and and let me just say uh from where i sit and anybody listening i always loved you but after spending this time, man, I I, I, I want to kidnap you and take you uh, back to my house. I, 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 or, or, go, or go live in the extra bedroom in y'all's house. We're gonna do we're gonna do some of that, brother, because I've enjoyed it just as much or more than you have. I Thank have you too, so John. Much. And, I and again, tell you. it's 
pleasure hunting with a champ. Well, buddy, it's yes, a pleasure sir. hunting with a, a country music legend and, oh, and a legendary you. man. And, you know, you, and John, John, I can't tell you enough, you're a special guy, and I can't wait to do some more turkey hunting with you. And I promise you, there won't be a song or record you got out that old Waddy ain't downloaded as soon as you hit it. Oh, and, and that's I, kind of you, brother. Well, yeah. And I'll look forward to We'll go hunting again soon. Well, we're going to do too. that. We're going to do that. Yes, sir. And, and I leave with this. Tell us one good George Jones story that, just, that you remember uh, of just uh, hanging with George. What was he like? Instead of a story, I'd like, just like to say, well, most people never knew this side of George Jones, but old George loved to get a lot of family and friends together, and he was almost wow. like, your granddaddy wanting to see everybody have a good time. And and a lot of people, you know, you hear this and that about George, and a lot of people don't know what a really good person he was that, that loved to be around people and, and loved loved to see them have a good time. Old George was wow. a, and truly one of the greatest natural singers that ever walked on this planet. That's unbelievable. Yes, sir. And, John, would you say in the way you describe George, is that John Anderson too? Oh, no, I can't be like George. Well, I'm saying from the standpoint of family <laughs> and friends. Oh, yeah, is I, that I it? love like that. It? But there again, I, you know, I, uh, I, pretty, I pretty much stay back in the shadows a little bit, these days especially. Um, family has become, you know, because I, like we were talking earlier, on the road so much and – Missed a lot of great family time and opportunities. Uh, nowadays, we have grandkids, and uh, wife and I are really into spending time with with the family and the grandkids these days. And uh, I, I that. really am enjoying life. Sure well, am. Well, we've enjoyed you, and again, thank you, thank brother. you, thank you for coming on the show, and thank you, John. It was a pleasure hunting with you, and we're gonna do this again, buddy. Yes, sir. We'll make it a point. Thank well, you, Michael. Yes, sir. Thank you.